Hello. We are Devoted Ministry Church. We are so glad that you can join us. Today we are having our Wednesday night Bible class. But before we start, I'm going to open up in prayer. Father God, my Lord in heaven, I thank you for this day. I thank you for bringing us through the year and last year and all these years. And I thank you for giving us this church to learn about you more and to get deeper into your word. And I thank you for opening our eyes to see, to see spiritual and physically. And I thank you for everything that you've done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now we're going to have our pastor senior. Hey, amen. He did a great job, Vincent. Didn't he do a good job? Yes. I really thank God for our children. What I give, we give all glory to God here in the church, how he is blessing our children. In fact, you know what? Um, well, I'd love for you to, well, you always see our children. I was going to say I'd love for you to meet some of our children, but you see them all the time. If you, if you view us online, you know, on Facebook, here on YouTube, or anywhere. I think we're on Instagram too and all those things. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into our Bible class. Y'all ready? Yes, yes, sir. All right, so we're on page 30. I'm sorry, 30. Not even. We're on page 63, I believe. Yours should match that. Um, page 63, and we're in Genesis 31, okay? Um, chapter, we're still in chapter. 31, yes, that's correct. And we're reading the comments on uh, verses 17 through 25. Now, we read those verses last week and a little bit the week before that, too. So we're going to pick up right there, all right? Everybody ready? You see that number four? Yes. You see that number four? Okay. So the first thing we see is that um, we see the word camels. And do you know, thank you, my dear, do you know why I have the word camels there? Yes. Why, Tolliver? Why is that in our notes? Because in the verses, it said that Jacob, I meant, oh yeah, Jacob, uh, to, uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Jacob put, uh, brought his, put his sons in No, it's, you're almost right. You have right. Because the, the verses say that Jacob had a lot of, Camels. Camels. Camels, as well as what else did Jacob have a lot of? Yes, Olivia. Sheep, what else? Goats. Goats and other Cows. Yes, all of that. And you know why he had so much? Because why do you think he had so much, Isaiah? Yes. Because what was Laban God gave to Jacob? Yes, exactly. God took away what Laban had and gave it to Jacob. And Jacob was a very rich man when Jacob went to stay with Laban 20 years before this because he's been there 20 years now when he went to stay with Laban was was Jacob rich at that time no he was not was he um did he have anything no how do you know he had nothing somebody tell and you're right but how do you know tell me yes Tom because his mother told him to uh, go to my brother's Laban's house so, did he own anything when he left? His, no, his parents' home? No, no. no, he did not. Ooh, I was thirsty. Thank you, honey. So, anyway, so let's read the notes. Jacob's wealth had begun to resemble Abraham's. Uh, we see that in chapter 24, 10. Then the next uh, note, we already discussed this last week, we see images. Idols, false gods, images... Where, where the verse says, now, Rachel, who is, whose daughter is Rachel? Yes, Vincent. The daughter of Laban. The, the daughter of Laban. And who is Laban? Uh, Symphony. Laban was the brother of Rebecca. And who is Rebecca? <laughs> Tolliver. The wife of Isaac. And who is Isaac? <laughs> yes, Symphony. The son of Abraham. And who is Abraham? <laughs> Isabella Antoinette. Ah, tough one now. Tolerant. The son of Tara. The son of Tara. And who? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that was very good. Give him a hand. That was excellent. 
That's right. So yes, they did really well. Um, so that's that, that's some there's some interesting things in there. Uh, if I go back, we you will never get through this. So even though I'm tempted, we're going to keep going forward. Okay. All right. Here we go. So Rachel, when Jacob was taking his wives and his children and all of his possessions and leaving Laban, okay, Rachel, his favorite wife, took one of her father's idols and hid, hid it in her stuff. I'm hearing some ringing feedback. I don't know. That's why I keep checking. Anyway, took one of her father's idols and hid it among her stuff. All right? In, in one of her father's images. What is an image? What's an idol? Yes, Vincent. A false god. A false god. Why did why did we say a false god? Hmm. Symphony. Because there is only one god. And what's his name, Tolliver? Jehovah. So, hmm. So wait a minute, and I agree with that. So Rachel took a false god, but how can she take a false god and put it among her stuff? Yes. Because it. His. Her father had the false gods. Yep. Yeah, yes. You're right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But what exactly did she take? Yes. She took the statue. A statue. It was a statue of a false god. And of course, there is no other god but Jehovah. All right? But people name things gods, and there are spirits that name themselves, that imitate or, or present themselves to be gods all right and people who worship them make statues to um symbolize them like for instance well i don't need to go into a, for instance you all understand that all right so she took one of her father's little statues we don't know how big it was the bible doesn't tell us but we, we're going to get an idea of the size soon so Tolliver, pl please read letter b images idols false gods. Rachel, Rachel apparently is not a worshiper of Jacob's God alone. Notwithstanding what she had just said in verses 14 and 15, she still held to the false gods of her father, her country, and, and her upbringing, as do many of God's people today. So even though I'm tempted to deal with that, we dealt with that last week, and if I keep going backwards, we'll never get out of these verses. So let's, somebody read letter C. From time, from a time of close familial marriages. Familial just means, what word, young people, even though we've never discussed that, what word, root word, seems to be inside of that? Yes. Fancy. Familiar? No, good guess. And, and that's, that word comes from that root too, but... Fam Go ahead. Sam. Family. Family. So, family marriages, familial marriages. Go ahead. From a time of close familial marriages, yes. Laban's lineage and relationship to Jacob is quite interesting. He was the son of Bethuel, who was the son of Nahor, Abraham's brother. Genesis chapter 22, verse 22, verse, verse 33 through 33. 20. 23. <laughs> Laban's sister, Rebecca, married married. Isaac, Abraham's son, and his daughters, Leah and Rachel, married Isaac's son, Jacob. So, Laban was Abraham's great nephew. He was both Isaac's second cousin and brother-in-law, and Jacob's uncle and father-in-law. So, Laban was Jacob's uncle and father-in-law. All right, let's keep going. Symphony, read D, please. Laban is Wait, called... Wait, I made a mistake. We were supposed to let Isabel Antoinette read this week, remember? Um, he couldn't read last week. You read D. Go ahead. You try it. Laban is called both an Aramean, a, Aramean and a, Sorry. a Syrian. Syrian. So read that sentence again. Laban, Laban is called both an, Ar, an <coughs> Aramean, Aramean and a Syrian. And a Syrian. Mm -hmm. The source of his identity. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let you read another space where there aren't so many challenging words, okay? Can I have an adult read that part? Letter D. D. Laban is called both an Aramean and a Syrian. The source of his identity as an Aramean is clear. It goes back to chapter 22, verse 21. 
Error. Let's look at that. Somebody go to 2221. So we're saying, what, what I'm saying here, because it's in the verses, Laban, we'll see Laban identified as an Aramean, and we also see him identified someplace as a Syrian. So we understand why he's called an Aramean, and we're going to see that now. Tolliver, 2221. Go ahead. Hus, Hus, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Camuel, the father of Aram. Okay, read that verse again for me, son, just so I can, let me turn to it, because um, it, it doesn't, I'm not sure why I chose that verse. Let me see if it answers the, the, the cause. Go ahead, son, please. Yes, Edmund Jr., please. The, note the, the, the verse, please, 2221. Buzz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Camuel, the father of Aaron. Okay, read 22. I can hear where it's going, but it seems like something might be missing. These are just more names. Okay, hold on. Let's read 20, please. I mean, uh, yeah, 20. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Okay, got it. And then read 21. Huz his firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Camuel, the father of Aram. Aram. Aramean, Aramean, Aram. And obviously Laban, who came from, who was the father of those people you just named? It was in verse Nahor. 20, right? Nahor. Nahor. And who was Nahor's son? Bob Hus. Besides that, wait a minute, let me, let me, let me see mm -hmm. something, hold on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I want to look at something. Just a minute. You know I haven't seen these notes in a long time. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Nahor is the father of Bethuel, but he's also the father of Aram, yes. correct? Yes. yes. All right. And Laban is the son of Bethuel as well as uh, Rebekah. Okay? So that's why Na uh, Laban was called an Aramean. He was a, a descendant of Aram. So that part is clear. Now you can go back to the notes. And then young people, I know this seems a little bit, you know, obscure or clunky. I want you to have some Bible knowledge. That's what, when we get to details like these, it's because I want you to have some Bible knowledge. And of course, the adults, I want you to hang on to these details. All right? That's why I work so hard on them. No, I'm just kidding. All right, go ahead, son. Continue the note, please. <laughs> uh, a a Aram was Laban's great grandfather. So not his grandfather, as I just indicated. I went to, but he was his great grandfather. Mm -hmm. Laban lived in Paddan Aram. Paddan Aram. You see that, Sin uh, Symphony? You've been reading that over the last couple of weeks. Paddan Aram. You see the name Aram right in that in the name of that place, Paddan Aram. Yes. Okay, go ahead, son. Which means the field of Aram. This commentary has not uncovered why Laban was also called Assyrian. Verses 20 and 24. Okay, this commentator, which would be? You. Oh, hey. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I never uncovered why Laban is also called Assyrian. I have not discovered that in my research. I did research it, but we know why he was called an Aramean, because he was the great-grandson of Aram. I'm not sure why he was called a seer. Okay? Just so you know. All right, read the next note, please, son, while you're at it. E, please. Don't say a word to Jacob. Verse what is that referring to, verse 24? When Laban was on his way to uh, overtake Jacob. To now, why was he doing that? Was he chasing Jacob? Mm. Yes. Somebody, children? Yes. yes. Why? Why was he chasing? Was he happy? Was he chasing Jacob because he had a gift for him and Jacob mm -hmm. left too early mm -hmm. and no. he was so happy? What? Why was he chasing him? Because, because he left. Yes, Vincent. He left without him knowing. Yes, but yep, yeah, that's true. Um, Tower. He, he ran away. Yes, and was Laban upset when he found out? Yes. yes. Okay. So, but he was chasing him, and what happened? Oh, and uh, as Laban, after six or seven days, when Laban was about to overtake Jacob, the night before, God spoke to him in a dream 
and said, don't say anything, don't say anything to David. Excuse me. Yeah. Don't say anything to Jacob, whether good or bad. Yeah, he said, don't say anything to Jacob, good or bad. All right? So Laban had to have been riding furiously, flying to overtake Jacob. But without even continuing to read, why do you think I say that? Yes. Is he uh, just six days away? Yeah, Jacob, first of all, he lived three days away. He left and was gone for three days. All right? So when Laban found out that Jacob was gone, how long had Jacob already been gone? Six days. Six days. And he still caught up to him. Laban was flying. And he was very angry. All right? <laughs> Jacob lived three days journey away from Laban. Chapter 30, verse 36. And Laban did not discover that Jacob had fled until he had been gone for three days. Verse 22. So Jacob had a six-day head start before Laban ever set out after him. But Laban rode for only seven days. He rode for only seven days before he caught up to Jacob. All right? Um, of course... It is also likely that Jacob was moving at a very leisurely uh, pace. What do I mean, Tolliver, leisurely pace? Yes. Like, not just a casual pace? Yes. Excellent. Good context clue. It's also likely that Jacob was not going very fast, even though he was trying to get away undetected. But um, considering the size of his entourage and menagerie, I know those are two big words, young people. That means considering the size of the number of people he had with him, and just for fun, who knows what a menagerie is? Just for fun. Anybody? No. Yeah, Symphony. In a mouth? No, I thought you had it. It sounded like you, his collection of animals and a menagerie in the uh, means animals. Right? I didn't dream those. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. He's like, <laughs> anyway, so... Let's see. Um, so we got new verses. I need, how about, um, Tolliver, you read verses 26 through 35, please. And Laban said to Jacob, What hast thou done? That thou hast stolen away unawares to me and carried away my daughters as captives taken with the sword. Wherefore didst thou flee away secretly? Wherefore means why did you? He said, why did you run away secretly? Go ahead, Tolliver. <coughs> uh, wherefore didst thou flee away secretly and steal away from me? And didst not tell me that I might have sent thee away with mirth and with song, with tablet and with heart? Do you Laban, what he's saying is I would have sent you away with a big party. Do you think that's what Laban really would have... Yeah, <laughs> you <okay>. think... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Tom. <laughs> and hast not, and hast not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Suffered, young people, means allowed. And you didn't allow me to kiss my sons and daughters goodbye. Now, did his, some of his sons go with Jacob? No. So why did he say my sons and daughters? Yes. He was talking about his grandchildren. Okay, you go, Symphony. He was talking about his grandchildren. His grandchildren. Remember how they, this is the way they spoke about family in those days. Um, even Jesus is considered the son of David. And he was born how many thousands of years? I always forget. Uh, 14 generations. 14 generations from David. All right? So, Laban saying, you didn't let me kiss any of my, da my daughters, my grandkids? What, what is this? Go ahead, Tolliver. Thou hast now done foolishly in so doing it, it is in the power of my hand to do you hurt but the god of your father speak unto me yesternight saying take thou heed that thou speak not to jacob either good or bad and now though thou wouldest needs be gone because thou sore long longest so he's saying that now that you apparently have to go, you need very much to go because you're longing for your whom tolerance. What does it say? You so long? Longest after thy father's house. Go. Keep reading. Yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And Jacob answered and said to Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said Isabel Antoinette. 
What, what did Laban mean? Why have you stolen my gods? Okay, he's saying, okay, you got to go. I understand you want to get back to your family. Okay, but why did you steal my gods? What is he talking about? Yes, Isaiah. Why did you steal my statue? Why did you steal my statue? Aha. Uh -huh. So what does that mean, Vincent? He, he saw that someone took He saw statue. that the statue was gone. I right, keep reading, Tolliver, up to 35. For I said, hard venture, thou wouldest take by force thy daughters from me, with whomsoever thou findest thy gods. Let him not live. Before our brethren, discern thou what is thine with me, and take it to thee. For Jacob knew not that Rachel had stolen them. And Laban went into Jacob's tent. Okay, stop there for a minute before you say that. So let me explain what Jacob has said. So Jacob answers Laban, and he, t he tells Laban why he snuck away. He said, because I thought that if I told you I was leaving, you would have taken your daughters from me. What does he mean? What daughters? Symphony. Rachel and Leah. Yes, you're my wives. Okay? Um, and, and then he says, and as for this God you're talking about, this statue... Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, okay? If any, he says, if anybody has, anybody has it, what should happen to them, Tolliver? Look for it again. In the, he said, if you find it among any of my people, you can... With whomsoever thou findest thy God, let him not live. Let him not live. What does that mean? Kill him. You can kill the person. Why do you think Jacob was saying that? Vincent. Because he didn't know anybody had it. He didn't know anybody had it. Do you think he was he really meant you can kill anybody who finds it? Who anybody who has it? No. no, he thought nobody had it. He thought it was another one of Laban's tricks. That just came. Here, here, here goes Laban again. He's always got some trick up his sleeve to, to keep me back. Alright? So he says, search all my stuff. Search all my people. If you find it, you can kill the person. Alright? Um keep reading Tolerant. Then what did Laban do? And Laban went into Jacob's tent, and into Leah's tent, tent, and into the two maidservants' tents. But he found them not. <clears throat> then Pause. Mm -hmm. That obviously explains why Laban was able to catch up to him. Even though I, I was correct that Laban was riding really furiously because he was angry. But Jacob had settled. He, he made tents because the people had to sleep. You understand the animals had to be taken care of, so he wasn't even moving anymore. All right? They had set up a camp. Everybody understand that, young people? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, go ahead, Tolliver. Keep reading. Uh, then went he out of Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the image and put them into the... It. Now Rachel had taken the images and put them in the camel's furniture. It's so it seems like she took more than one. And I noticed Laban said, God's up. All right? Yes. Go ahead, Tolliver. Mm. And put them in the camel's furniture. And what does that mean, the camel's furniture? The camels had tables and chairs and... <laughs> yes, <laughs> Isabel Internet. What do you think it means, the camel's furniture? Okay, Vincent, you go. The camel's food? That was good. No. Any taller. The bags that were on the camel? The camel stuff. Whatever they, the bags that the camels were carrying. Yes. I agree with that very much. Yes. Whatever, things pertaining to the camels. The things the camels would have been carrying. Correct. Go ahead, Tolliver. And sat upon them. And they been searched all the tent, but found them not. And she said to her father, let it not displease my Lord, that I cannot rise up before thee. For the custom of women is upon me. And he searched, but found not the images. That's 35? Yes, sir. Okay, so what has happened? Laban has gone into everybody's tent and searched for his gods, his images, his statues. And he hasn't found them any place. Then he goes to Rachel, and she's sitting down on top of the camel's stuff. What had she done with the camel stuff. What did she place there? Yes, Tolliver. She placed the images. She hid them under where she was sitting. And she says to him when he comes in, I'm sorry, 
my lord me that's her respectful way of speaking to her father i'm sorry i can't get up and greet you um but um this is not a good time for me adults you already understand what she said yes okay so she lied <laughs> she said this is not a good time um i can't get up um and so he doesn't search where she's sitting for obvious reasons. He's not going to say, no, you got to get up. Okay? See, he doesn't search, but he didn't know that, obviously, the statues were in there. All right, now let's look at the notes. First, A, if Laban did not blatantly disobey God, he came dangerously close to doing so. What do I, what do I mean by that? Yes, Solomon. Uh, God told him not to speak to Jacob at all, so yes. since he's speaking to Jacob, he disobeyed God. So, if he didn't outright disobey God, he was this close, okay? Because God had told him, do not say anything to Jacob, good or bad, all right? But he did. He said plenty. Let her be. Laban was disingenuous. That means he wasn't being honest, children. Laban was disingenuous, despite there being some truth to what he said. He cared more about losing Jacob than he did about being denied the opportunity to give his daughters a big send off. And we already alluded to that. Laban wasn't going to give them a big party. No way. No way. That's really what he was angry about, that he was losing Jacob. All right? Let us see. How about you take that symphony? Laban was mistaken. He had no power whatsoever by which to hurt Jacob. In Why did I say that? What did Talver read that made me say that? What did Laban say that made me say that? Yes, Talver. Since he left, I should, I should hurt you? Yeah, he said, I have, he said, don't you know I have the power to do you harm? I have the power to hurt you? Now, Symphony, read what I said. Let her see. Laban was mistaken. He had no power whatsoever by which to hurt Jacob upon in the least bit. Page 62, note 1a. He actually would have brought harm upon himself if he had done so. See? So let's look at Psalm 105, 105 verses 13 through 15. to 15. You can read those simply. But what I said in my note, Laban was mistaken when he said that. He actually had no power to hurt Jacob. And if he had done something to Jacob, all right, he would have brought harm to himself. Now, we're going to look in, at the psalm and see why I chose those verses, but I have a more immediate answer why I know that he would have brought harm to himself. Son, why do you think so? Because of um, uh, Jacob's God. Was, and tell me exactly, though. He was already protecting Jacob. He already said, don't speak to him he, like that. Because God had told him, don't say anything to Jacob. So even if we didn't read the psalm, which we are, I already know that if Laban had done something to hurt Jacob, he would have brought terrible harm to himself. So he was dead wrong when he said, I could hurt you. Uh, read that symphony. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. That's God speaking. He reproved kings for their sakes. God would have slain kings to protect his people, and he has. He has done so. Name one king that he brutally killed. <laughs> yes. Herod. Herod. I wasn't thinking of Herod. Um, who do you say? Herod. Who? Herod. Give me a different one. Old Testament, yes. King uh, Saul. Um, no. Saul from Saul. Yes. The, the, the husband of Jezebel? Ahaz. Fa I'm thinking Pharaoh. Yes. Drowned him and his whole army in the sea. <laughs> All right? And he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That's God speaking, saying, don't touch my, don't touch my people and do not hurt them. Do not hurt my people. So, by the way, just, just dealing with this, we know that there are missionaries, right, Isaiah? Missionaries who, throughout history, have been killed. We can go back before missionaries. Remember what Stephen was talking about when he was preaching? He was t t quoting the history of the children of Israel to the Jews, and he mentioned what? 
You always kill the prophets. You always kill the prophets. When you read Revelation, you're going to find out that God has never forgotten that. He answers. God, let me tell you something. Those people who killed the prophets, God is going to repay them. They are going to be horribly repaid. And those missionaries who died, you know, we've studied some of the missionaries. Y'all have seen documentaries. Some of you have read books. Missionaries from, oh, back in the 17th, 18th, 19th century, uh, even early 20th century. I think about something in China called the Boxer Rebellion that was in the late 19th century where the people in China got sick and tired of all of these foreigners coming to their country and they particularly focused on the missionaries and they killed many missionaries, slaughtered them, brutally murdered them. God knows. Tolerant. How do I know he knows? You could answer that many ways, but I'm thinking of one thing that you mentioned recently when you were talking. How do I know that God knows every one of those missionaries that were killed and every person who killed them? Because God knows all things. Yes. Yes. Yes, Symphony. God sees everything. Yes. God is omnipresent. You remember what Thomas said recently? He quoted something. He said that not one sparrow will fall to the ground and die. You know why the Bible, do you know why Jesus said sparrow? Why did he say sparrow and not hawk or eagle or albatross? Uh, Symphony's hand went up first. because a sparrow is small? A sparrow is a very tiny bird. It's not the tiniest bird, but it's a very tiny bird. Not even one tiny bird will fall to the ground and die without God's notice. He knows every single sparrow. So if he knows every sparrow that has ever died, I guarantee you, he knows every missionary, every prophet, every person who has spoken in his name and in the name of his son who has been murdered. And he knows the person who has murdered them. Okay? So, Laban was wrong. He was not going to be able to hurt Jacob and get away with it. All right, let's continue reading. D, Symphony, keep reading, letter D. Jacob did not know Rachel had taken the idol, verse 32. And if Rachel took it in order to bring a blessing upon them, she did not know that it was highly unnecessary. Before you continue, why did, and, and I said, and probably counterproductive, which means not only did it not bless them, it was causing them problems. But why did I say if she took those idols to bring a blessing to herself and her family, that was highly unnecessary? Why do I say that? Yes, Vincent. Because the only one who blesses you is God. Yes, and? The, those images cannot do anything for you. Yes, you're right there too. And, Tolliver? God was the one who gave them everything they had. God had already highly blessed, blessed them immensely. And he had already promised to keep doing that. Did she need to serve other gods to, to get blessed and for her family, family to be blessed? Did she? No, no. No, not at all. Um, I was thinking of a verse. I guess I'm going to keep going if it doesn't come back to me. Hmm. Anyway, let's keep moving. So, Rachel made a huge mistake. Oh, I know. I know what I was thinking of, not just a verse. That reminds me of something in the Bible, something in the Old Testament. Does it remind anybody else of something? Somebody who did something, Edmund Jr., because they thought it was going to bring them a great blessing. Daughter, I can see it in your eyes. You know. You know right now. It's coming out of your mouth. No. Yes. No. Symphony. When Rachel told Jacob to before that, the door, two people, no. two people. Oh, oh uh, Sarah. Sarah and no. So, um, Those are all good guesses. The husband and the wife that no, said, no. Way back, way back. Back it up. 
Wait, ask the question again. Dad? So, my point is, oh, Eve? did Rick, two people, Adam and, Adam, and Adam and Eve, what did the devil say to them? What did he promise? Well, he said it to Eve. Yes, Rachel? You don't know. He's raising your hand. Um, what did the devil say to Eve? You can you be like God's? If yes, if you do this, you'll be like God's, knowing good and evil. In other words, you're gonna you're gonna bring even a greater blessing to yourself. Did they need to do that to bring a blessing to themselves? No, no. that was a trick. Rachel fell for the trick. Somehow she thought, "Oh, we're leaving. I better take these." Couldn't she see? <laughs> Couldn't she see what they already had? Couldn't she see? what Jacob's God had already done. But I'm not laughing at Rachel and picking on her. You know why? Why do you think? Yes, Tiffany. This is the flesh? Mm, yes, but no. Why do you think? Because we do the same thing. This generation. We never, you're right, it's the flesh, but people never change. People never change. She couldn't see how God was with them. She herself, she and Leah had said, God has taken away everything that belonged to our father and gave it to us. And they were leaving their father with great, immense wealth. They had, Jacob had nothing when he arrived. And when he married those two women, he had nothing. They were now leaving with almost, with a small nation basically and she felt somehow that oh my goodness I better take these don't we mix the things of God with a little bit of the world a little bit of good luck a little bit of the flesh as Symphony said to make sure don't don't Christians fudge fudge it a little bit on their income tax returns just so I can make sure I get that extra benefit? Or don't they lie a little on, you understand what, you understand what I mean? Young people, do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. To make sure that I'm gonna get the blessing, I'm gonna get the goodie, mm -hmm. instead of completely relying on God and trusting Him. I say, sit with your mother. Trusting Him, knowing that He has promised to take care of his children. And th th this is a verse in, in, in Hebrews where Paul, or whoever the writer of Hebrews is, said, he is faithful who promised. He is faithful who promised. Um, Edmund Jr., just untangle that language for the young people, modern version of that. He is faithful who promised. What does that simply say? God will do what he said he do. The one who said it is going to do it. He is faithful to do it. And not only that, he can. He is able. He's able to do it. Rachel, she didn't see it. We are so blessed. We are so blessed by your God, Jacob. I don't need these. <laughs> All right, so let's see. You were reading letter D, right? It was count, probably counterproductive, which means it probably hurt them. If anything, it would have it would have had the opposite effect of blessing them. It would have cursed them. All right, letter E, um, Isabel Antoinette. See if you can manage that one. Letter E. Mm -hmm. Jacob had ever reason to. Every. Say it again. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Go ahead. Jacob had every reason to destruct. Destruct. Distrust. Distrust Laban, and he answered him honestly. Verse 31. Okay, let's keep going. Can you read letter F? There is no indication of the size of the idol Rachel took. It was small enough Okay, for we've her. actually already talked about that before I got here, so let's go forward. Try letter G, the last one, for those verses. There are two important notes in verse 35. First, custom and... Okay, I just, I just noticed it. 
we talked about that too. She's like, thanks for letting me read. <laughs> <laughs> We've already talked about those. All right, so now we have new verses. Um, Symphony, can you read verses 36 to 42? <laughs> you did good. You read something. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. We already discussed those before you even got to read them. Go ahead, Symphony. <laughs> and Jacob was, wa- was wroth and showed with Laban. And Jacob answered and you said You know what, Symphony? I'm, I'm interrupting all the readers tonight. It's just because I feel in my spirit. I feel like the Holy Spirit wants to let wants us to end on this note tonight. First of all, it'll be good for us to end a little early anyway because we have a big graduation tomorrow and everybody's making plans and preparations and getting themselves ready. But besides that, I feel like the Holy Spirit wants us to leave on this note. He is faithful who promised. God has been making us some... Mm. First of all, let's roll it back. God has made many promises to each of us individually in our lives, especially rather recently. Of course, since we've been saved, but even rather recently. And my wife and I, I bet we can look back individually I'm talking about, but we can look back through the years before we were before we met and before we were married, and I bet we can remember promises that God made to us, maybe through his prophetess, maybe through a prophet, maybe through somebody that God used to speak. So God has made individual promises to us. I remember my two children are in the room, two of our children. I remember that when y'all were little kids back in, oh man. I remember as far back as when you were about one year old for the first time, and then a second time when you probably were about, say, three years old or something, God spoke to me, all right? He spoke to my family, and he said, that was the first time he said this. Now, he said it subsequent times. He said, I'm going to use your children. He told me that way, way back. Um, Since we've been a church, God has made promises to us. He made promises to me about the church before I had a church. Um, He's made promises to us recently. He even told us something wonderful he's going to do for us as recent as yesterday. He is faithful who promised. What does the word faithful mean, young people? Think about it. What does faithful mean? Yes, Olivia. Grateful? No, good. (laughs) It's just giving me a rhyme. Yes, Symphony. Believer? Believer? No. I think you're under, I know what you mean, but yes, Vincent. Promising? So if it's, if the Bible says he is faithful, who promised? What do you, what does it sound like the word faithful means? Tell him. He, you can, you can trust him. You can trust him. He is trustworthy. He's dependable. He won't say something and not do it for a couple of reasons. If I'm looking for a verse that I have noted here in my Bible. I know the verse, but I want to I don't want to say where it is because I want to read it. That's why. So I know that I have a notation of it somewhere here in my Bible, somewhere back here. It's in Numbers. We're going to turn to Numbers. I've preached on it so many times, too. Let me see. Where is that? Is that Numbers? See, I can't think of it now. Numbers. Where is that? I know I've... Numbers. Ha! Ah! Numbers 20... Numbers 23, verse 19. Edmund Jr., do you have a Bible? Yes. Please. Numbers 23, verse 19. Nine. 19. Go ahead. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Read the second half again. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? 
or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Now, modern English, what did you just say? What did you just read? Uh, has he, the things that he has said, won't he do them? Is he not able to do what he said he would do? He, you know what that's like? That's like saying he said it and he's not going to do it. He spoke it and he's not going to bring it to pass. And when I preached that a couple of times, I said, why, why not? Why would he not bring something to pass that he said? Why would he not do something that he spoke and said he was going to do? And I remember saying this. There are only two reasons that somebody breaks a promise. Uh, anybody who ever heard me preach that message, do you remember what I said those reasons are? There are only two reasons that a person breaks a promise. So, um, lack of ability and... Mm, who said that? She's an obedience. No, two reasons somebody breaks a promise. You're right on the lack of ability or lack of... Yes. Authority? No. Tolerance? Desire. Either they can't or they don't want to. There's no... Think, for just a couple of seconds, think of another reason that somebody would break a promise. There's no other reason. Either they don't want to keep it, they don't want to fulfill it, or they can't. Does God fit into either one of those categories? No. no, no. He wants to. New Testament. Come on, the verse is just, ah, I praise the Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just, I'm just so excited when the Bible just, it's like reference, a reference book in my head. What are you going to say? Uh, anything you ask. In the no, 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 good, okay. No, New Testament. All of those are good ones, but Jesus said, Something happened with Jesus. I said, God wants to keep his promises. Something happened with Jesus. Relevant to want to. In fact, guess what? I think I use this as support for when I preach that. Because within this story of Jesus, both things, is that your hand? No. Oh, you're just dolling up. No, sir. <laughs> both things, both things fit into that story of Jesus. Both categories. Ability. Ah! <laughs> ability. Don't steal this on Sunday. No, sir. Ability and desire. Jesus. Ability and desire. Both. He wants to and he can. I just gave you like the biggest hint. A bolder sized hint. <laughs> Somebody came to Jesus. Yes, Tolliver? The, uh, the rich ruler? No. A leper. And he said, Lord, Lord if, if you wanted to, you can make me whole. He said, if you want to, you can make me clean. If you want to, you can. If you want to, you are able. God wants to, and he can. He is faithful who promised he is able to keep his promises, and he will. He doesn't have any reason not to. He doesn't. He doesn't fall into either of those categories. So we're going to stop for tonight, and we're going to leave it at that. That's a blessing for us to hear during this week through all the things God has been bringing us to, bringing us through, to and through. And it's also a good stopping point for our Bible class, and that will give you some time to get ready for the big day tomorrow, and I believe the Holy Spirit wants that to linger in our minds for the next several days for what He is going to do among us. He is faithful who promised. He's faithful who promised. Um, I'm going to ask, you, would you like to come and pray for us to close? You never come up before the camera. All right, she doesn't want to. Rachel, you want to pray? Your mommy doesn't want to come up. She should, huh? She should. I know. How come I'm always letting her off the hook? Because you're scared. I know. <laughs> I'm scared of her. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not scared. No, I'm just kidding. She's going to close. Go ahead. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Praise oh, God. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for today's lesson. Thank you, God, for being with us. Thank you, God, for always delivering on heavenly Father God and never falling short in anything that you do. You are perfect and holy, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night. And I hope you, <laughs> hope you all enjoyed our Bible study. We'll see you guys next time.